This video is the third in a series on the diversity of invertebrates and is going to focus on the arthropods, which in terms of number of species uh, are seem to be the most uh, diverse and successful uh, group of organisms on the planet. Uh, nematode worms, which we are discovering more and more, might challenge uh, them, but in other words, uh, they are probably the most successful, and if not, uh, then certainly within uh, the, uh, the top two. This is a tardigrade, uh, a water bear. Um, it is an almost arthropod. And so among the uh, groups of invertebrates, uh, nematode worms also uh, molt. And so they are put in a group called ecdysozoans with the arthropods. And then also within this group are two minor uh, groups, the tardigrades like this, and also uh, the velvet worms, um, which have some arthropod features, not enough to actually consider them arthropods, um, but nevertheless, uh, 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 arthropod features seem to have evolved in stages, both with these living organism comparisons and in the fossil record. And so uh, these have some, but not all of the features of arthropods, like segments, uh, limbs, and uh, et cetera. Uh, they are extremely resistant to environmental changes, have even been able to you know, survive in the conditions of uh, space. And so you know, they are uh, truly remarkable uh, in, um, uh, in many ways. Um, but once again, uh, the uh, many animals are microscopic or very small. So we often you know, think of animals as being these large things like cats, dogs, bears, people, etc. cetera. Um, but many animals are uh, much, much smaller and actually uh, many require microscopes uh, to see them. From arthropod-like uh, 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 organisms evolved uh, the first arthropods uh, by the Cambrian period 500 uh, million years ago. And from then they have uh, diversified because of a number of great successes. For example, they have an exoskeleton made of uh, chitin, which uh, protects them. And because it is segmented, and because the limbs that they developed are segmented, it could then be adapted for multiple um, uh, purposes. Jointed limbs can be modified for movement, but also for prey capture, for swimming, um, and for a number of other features. Um, many arthropods are microscopic and then compose what we refer to as zooplankton. Um, the name arthropod literally means jointed limb. And so here you can see that not only do they have legs, but there are joints in this legs. And once again, that increases the versatility of um, of uh, these legs here you see, you know, obviously the large legs of a grasshopper allowing it uh, uh, to jump. Um, in addition to simple eyes, uh, they then also can possess compound eyes. So here's a simple eye in an arthropod. Uh, some have two, some have only one. Um, some again have more than uh, uh, two. Here's a, 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 cr a, a crab larva is what crab larva look like. But now here is a compound eye. The eye is made of individual units known as omatidia, which form this large complex structure. And thus the image is then gathered from all of these you know, separate uh, images. Compound eyes evolved very early in the trilobites, uh, which you just uh, saw. Now they aren't universally present. Some, uh, Arthropods don't have compound eyes. And among the insects, for example, some don't have them as larvae, for example, in this beetle larva, but the adults will uh, have it. Um, some, such as this termite, uh, lack uh, uh, compound eyes. Uh, so while they're not universally uh, present, it is a distinctive uh, feature of uh, many of the arthropods. Arthropods are such an enormous group. We then, uh, a phylum, we then split it into subgroups, and uh, one of the, the groupings which seems uh, to you know, continue to be supported is the separation uh, based on the type of, um, of mouth parts uh, that they possess. So the arthropod head, not to get into the weeds here, is actually the fusion of lots and lots of, of uh, structures. So the ancestral 
uh, arthropods had segments in the head with, you know, and some of these segments could have limbs, and then they kind of all fused together to form uh, the head. And then as a result, we could ask, well, the, you know, mouth parts um, which are closest uh, to uh, the head, are they more crushing or are they more um, grasping? Um, the more grasping uh, ones, uh, the um, uh, the mouth parts uh, closest uh, to the mouth, once again, modified limbs uh, originally, um, are what are called chelicera. And then the organisms which uh, have them are called uh, chelicerates. And so uh, this would include uh, scorpions, spiders, horseshoe crabs, uh, ticks. Uh, these have more um, grasping uh, mouth parts. So those are uh, the chelicerates. So you know, among the arthropods, then this would then be a subgroup, you know, the scorpions, the spiders, the uh, horseshoe crabs, the ticks, the mites, um, whereas the ones which have more crushing mouth parts, uh, although these can be varied, uh, these uh, are called mandibles, and that would then be the group called mandibulata. Uh, that would include um, uh, that would uh, include insects uh, and crustaceans. Okay. I apologize, somehow I, a video skipped right to the, the one that followed it. Uh, so once again, uh, just in ancestral arthropods, the head was constructed by the fusion of lots of complex, uh, of individual structures, and the head got more complex over uh, time. And so you know, organisms like this uh, were almost arthropods. So they had some features, but they had not, you know, all fused together to form the arthropod uh, head. And among the arthropods, we have scorpion spiders, ticks, horseshoe crabs, trilobites uh, from the fossil record that have more uh, grasping mouth parts. So let's look at this scorpion and look up close. So that's what its mouth parts uh, look like. Um, if you were to look at a spider's uh, mouth parts here or a ticks, um, they uh, seem to group together as opposed to the mandibulata, which include uh, the crustaceans, the insects. Uh, so there is a, a termite. Here is the mouth parts of a, um, a, a crab and a centipede and a, a millipede. Uh, now more mouth parts can be varied, but once again, you know, this is a, a basic grouping then within uh, the arthropods into these uh, two subgroups. Uh, the horseshoe crabs are very similar to the uh, fossil uh, trilobites, uh, which once uh, used to uh, uh, exist. Um, so they are uh, fossil uh, chelic uh, chelicerates. If you want to know what a you know trilobite might have been like, the horseshoe crab gives you the best you know uh, view of uh, of this. They were more variable in the past, but we still have some alive uh, today. Um, uh, from the chelicerates which began in the water, so for example, even scorpions began in the water. There were sea scorpions, uh, which some of which could get to be more than 10 feet long, long before there were land scorpions. Um, uh, from this group uh, uh, came a group which came out onto land, which would include uh, the spiders. Now, spiders are quite uh, diverse. A group which are predators. I think there might be one exception which can feed on plant material, but apart from that, um, essentially uh, their mouth parts inject digestive enzymes into the prey and then they can absorb the uh, uh, juices from their prey after uh, you know those enzymes have processed um, uh, uh, their, uh, uh, their prey inside uh, the prey's body. Um, here we see a, a spider with uh, all of its young. Here we see a, a spider preying on a, uh, a dragonfly. Um, uh, and so uh, these uh, are uh, predators. Uh, we know that they can make uh, silk, but not all spiders do. And so um, uh, spiders, uh, they belong to uh, larger groups uh, and their group, other group members don't make silk. So this would be ticks, mites, um, and then would include uh, even the harvestmen, uh, so what people call a daddy long legs. It's a spider, but it's distantly related to all other uh, spiders. So, you know, spiders, then there are groups within groups. Um, some spiders are merely hunting spiders uh, where they uh, don't uh, make uh, silk. Um, some uh, silk 
uh, uh, that is made doesn't really form a web, but more like a trip line. And so if an insect were to, you know, strike the, uh, uh, the trip line, uh, then the, uh, the spider knows, you know, to come out and to, um, uh, uh, to uh, grab hold of it. Uh, the, oh, where did it go? Um, uh, some uh, silk forms webs. Now, silk is incredibly strong, hence the Spider-Man movies. And that uh, clip that you just saw was explaining the molecular structure of the silk proteins with their beta-pleated sheets, which allow for such uh, strength. Um, some uh, spiders uh, simply make a mass of uh, strands forming a web, but then others uh, are more advanced and can then make very uh, precise um, and distinctive web uh, patterns for, uh, for uh, prey uh, capture. Um, uh, in the mandibulata group uh, are the centipedes and uh, millipedes. Uh, they have multiple segments, and from fossils, these may have been the first animals to colonize land. While they certainly vary, in general, millipedes tend to have two legs per body segment and are typically herbivores. Um, centipedes tend to have one leg per body segment and are typically uh, carnivores. And they can uh, deliver a uh, painful bite. And so you know, one should be careful, not with millipedes, but with centipedes. Some fossil uh, members of uh, this group could be well over 10 feet long, uh, living in the Carboniferous when the high oxygen levels in the air um, then <coughs> uh, allowed um, the uh, uh, insects to reach a much uh, larger uh, size. Uh, so centipedes and millipedes, uh, these are myriapods. Um, and another big group of the mandibulates is uh, the crustaceans. Now, uh, crustaceans are known for some of their larger members, such as crayfish, lobsters, crabs. Um, so, you know, just some basics on their anatomy. They do have uh, a circulatory system. So here's uh, the, uh, the heart here. Um, the circulatory systems uh, can uh, be open circulatory uh, systems, as in insects, uh, where the fluid doesn't always stay in blood vessels. Therefore, the heart doesn't have to be very big or strong because it's not pumping all throughout blood vessels. Once fluid is in the body cavity, then movements of the body can help uh, to pump them as well. Here are the gills of a crayfish. And so then as crayfish are moving their limbs, they're pumping water over the, um, uh, the gills of, uh, uh, of their bodies. Um, and then they have a digestive system, which um, like most invertebrates, will then reach the very tip of their tail. So their intestine ends where their body uh, ends. And so they have um, <clears throat> an intestine which runs the, the tip of the body, the anus is at the tip of the abdomen, and that will then be different from the scenario which we see in uh, the vertebrates and the chordates where there is a post-anal tail as one of the distinctive uh, features uh, of uh, the chordates. Um, the uh, nervous system uh, of invertebrates tends to be ventral, so most um, uh, invertebrates uh, are what we call protostomes, uh, and uh, that uh, comes from uh, which embryonic opening becomes uh, the mouth. Protostomes develop the mouth uh, first. Um, and then also other features is the heart tends to be on the dorsal side, the back, and the nerve cord tends to be on the front, while in the deuterostomes, which would include the vertebrates, uh, the reverse is uh, true. Um, now, uh, a number of types of gills can also then absorb oxygen from air, not just water. And so crayfish can come out onto land uh, briefly and uh, breathe the air, as uh, can uh, crabs. And so crabs are another group of crustaceans. There are crabs which spend all of their lives underwater. There are uh, crabs which spend almost all of their lives on land, and then many crabs which can go back and forth. So you know, be underwater for part of the day, and you know, say during the evening perhaps, uh, then come out and uh, and feed. So uh, crabs are also uh, crustaceans, and 
um, many crustaceans are, uh, are very small. And so what we refer to as zooplankton um, includes small animals, which, you know, if you're interested in food chains, you know, very often that is important for uh, the, uh, the fish uh, as, you know, the basis of, uh, of their food uh, chains. And so uh, here you can see a lot of small uh, arthropods. Now this is marine zooplankton. And in uh, a second, I'll show um, uh, Fred, uh, the different groups in freshwater uh, zooplankton. Uh, uh, and so, you know, for example, here you see lots of little fish. What do little fish eat? Uh, well, they eat, you know, in addition to uh, algae, they can also feed on very small animals, many of which need to be seen under uh, a microscope. These are all arthropods with an exoskeleton and the jointed limbs, uh, which define uh, the arthropods. Here you can see uh, a young crab. So crab larvae uh, are uh, common elements in a zooplankton. Now, uh, these legs, as all arthropod legs, can then uh, be adapted for a variety of uh, purposes. And so whether it be crabs or crayfish and lobsters, obviously uh, they can modify uh, some of their uh, their front limbs uh, for prey capture and for defense. Also notice that while crayfish are typically um, aquatic, um, you can uh, see them coming out on uh, to land uh, here. So here's, you know, a crayfish demonstrating its, you know, pinchers, which, you know, it can use uh, for uh, defense. Now, because arthropods are the most diverse organisms on planet Earth, obviously this is not the place to attempt to, you know, go through all of them uh, by any uh, means. Um, however, uh, here you can see that I have another uh, playlist on freshwater food chains, just trying to introduce that if you were to just, you know, go looking in the pond near you, you would be amazed at how many diverse living things that you could find. If you have a microscope, then obviously uh, you could find uh, many more. And so uh, whether we look at uh, the branchiopods, such as Daphnia, whether we look at ostracodes, which almost look like little clams, um, but the exoskeleton then kind of forms a hinge around uh, these um, as small uh, crustaceans, uh, so they can obviously close uh, this exoskeleton uh, around them and uh, and protect themselves. But that would be another group of, um, of arthropods. Uh, then there are isopods, copepods, amphipods. And so once again, there's just this amazing diversity of life and arthropods, the most diverse organisms on uh, the planet, uh, would certainly include a large number of subgroups. And if you were to just go, you know, looking at the biodiversity in uh, a pond uh, near you, uh, then you would certainly see uh, many of these um, uh, groups uh, there. All right. And so once again, I have this freshwater food chains um, uh, playlist and Zoom is going to, you know, slow down playing all of these uh, here. Um, but if, obviously, if you wanted to, you know, get to know uh, better the uh, tiny uh, arthropods in the zooplankton uh, near you and their roles in food chains, uh, these videos uh, can help you uh, uh, with that. Um, the most uh, successful uh, group of arthropods are the insects. Um, insects first appear in the uh, Devonian um, uh, uh, period. And uh, when we look at insects, and here I have you know, just a fruit fly for uh, comparison, um, in general, they have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and uh, the uh, and the abdomen, um, their uh, eyes, their mouth parts are on uh, the head. Uh, the uh, wings come from the uh, the abdomen, uh, I'm sorry, the thorax. Um, most insects have two pairs of wings. Some are wingless, and some, such as flies, have modified uh, one of the pairs uh, of wings to make a balancing structure known as a whole tier. So here you can see on an insect's body plan, there's head, thorax, and the abdomen. Um, most insects have two pairs of wings, <coughs> but that balancing structure is a whole tier 
uh, is a defining feature of flies. And insects typically have uh, three pairs of legs as uh, adults. Um, certainly lots of uh, fascinating uh, things about insects in general. And as I go through the, the remaining, um, <coughs> sorry, information on uh, insects, uh, whether it be, uh, uh, you know, aspects about them, such as the fireflies, which produce uh, light, uh, whether uh, at night, whether it be the, the katydids, which are producing uh, these, uh, uh, these coals. So uh, some uh, insects can uh, rub uh, parts of their wings against each other to make sound or to rub parts of their legs uh, against each other to make um, Uh, to make sound. Um, so I have videos with these. Sorry that if you watch the video, obviously it makes more sound. Come on. Um, given that insects are so diverse, one could study them in a variety of ways. So they're, they're too much for us to study here. But for example, if one were to ask, oh, how do they breathe? Well, you would be met by variation. So for example, many insects have on say the sides of the body or their limbs have these openings known as spiracles, uh, which let air in. And so that would be how uh, they uh, breathe. Uh, and so here, so some of the pumping of the limbs uh, might uh, be helping to move uh, fluid that way. Um, but then there are variations. So there are say aquatic beetles, which can grab a bubble of air with uh, these uh, hydrophobic hairs and bring it down uh, to the bottom with them. Or dragonflies and uh, damselflies. Damselfly larvae actually have gills from the tip of their body that they use to breathe. Uh, dragonfly larvae can draw uh, water into a, a chamber uh, in uh, their anus and they perform gas exchange there. So notice even these giant water bugs have breathing tubes. So this water scorpion can hang downwards um, and, uh, and be breathing. This whirly gig can bring a bubble of water underneath. Um, uh, it can bring water underneath the surface with it. Now, insects are so diverse, and for a student studying biodiversity, you might not only be interested in insects in general, uh, but insects in your backyard. And so on my YouTube channel, I have a, uh, uh, an area for wildlife of the Northeast United States. And here there's, um, you know, various playlists just on insects. So, you know, after introducing the insects, I'm just gonna run through uh, some of these. Um, insects then can be separated into groups. So just like um, we can have a, a phylum, you know, such as the phylum chordata in our case, which can be split into a class like class mammalia. And then uh, the class mammalia can then be divided into orders like the order primates or the order for rodents. Um, the class of insects can then be split into various uh, subgroups uh, and uh, you know, orders and then uh, families within those orders, et cetera. Uh, so for example, uh, some insects, including the most primitive insects, lacked wings. Sometimes you can see these um, uh, just as snow is melting, you know, they, uh, you can see just millions and millions of them popping around on the soil. These are called uh, springtails because they have a, um, an extension which can uh, then be used to propel themselves uh, uh, forward. Um, and there are other wingless insects as well. So the very first insects lacked wings and then um, and there are uh, uh, remain, uh, insects which uh, remain wingless uh, today. Um, some of the uh, primitive insects were unable to fold their wings over their body. So beetles have wings, but they fold them. Grasshoppers have wings, but they, they fold them over uh, their bodies. A moth has wings, but it can fold it over uh, its uh, body. Um, the earliest insects which had wings uh, were not able to do that. And so dragonflies, damselflies, and their relatives uh, would uh, be reminiscent of, you know, uh, of this group, you know, so an earlier branch. Uh, the groups of insects which we have alive today, they evolved slowly, and so some groups originated in the Paleozoic era, some uh, originated in the Mesozoic era with uh, the dinosaurs, etc.
And so I have one group of playlists which will go through information on uh, dragonflies, damselflies, uh, etc. But then going back to and so on my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Jan uh, 41, I have an area which is wildlife of the Northeast and in it, I include playlists for insects. So, you know, I have videos on dragonflies and damselflies, uh, the beetles, that would be an order of insects, Coleoptera, and going through uh, the diverse uh, beetles here. Some are terrestrial, some are um, or aquatic, um, going through the flies. Once again, flies have modified one of their pairs of, of wings uh, for a balancing uh, structure. Flies certainly uh, vary from ectoparasitic forms to ones which help with decomposing uh, to flies which are pollinators. Um, there's an order of insects known as hemiptera with piercing uh, mouth parts, and this would include many which uh, live in uh, aquatic environments. Uh, and then you know, uh, there are many other groups as well. So the group which would include, say, uh, grasshoppers, uh, the order Lepidoptera, which includes uh, butterflies, the order Hymenoptera, uh, which includes uh, bees, uh, wasps, and ants, etc. And so insects, um, specifically, and arthropods in general, are the most diverse group of animals on Earth in terms of number of uh, species. And rather than try to give an overview of this most diverse group here, I simply wanted to, to direct you to um, uh, the videos uh, which I had on these individual groups, because arthropods are a phylum, and within this phylum we could then identify um, different classes, uh, you know, subgroups of this phylum. This would include, you know, there are uh, crustaceans, there are myriapods, which include centipedes and millipedes, and there are insects, a class insecta. And then within insects, the class, we could then split that into orders, like the order Coleoptera for beetles, the order Odonata for dragonflies, the order Hymenoptera for bees. And then when they, within each of these orders, there would be families and genera and species. And so uh, the arthropods are a very diver, uh, diverse group of invertebrates.